hello and welcome back to Rondell Designs. If this is your first time on my channel, a big hello to you. In today's video, we're doing a step-by-step -step mixed media art tutorial working on a wooden board canvas. If you haven't seen these canvases before, they're basically a thin piece of plywood with uh, a canvas like the frame attached at the back, so really easy to hang. They give a really beautiful finish and an interesting texture to your artwork. I'm creating this video because two of my homeschool art class students missed out on this particular week. So a big shout out to Ruby and Tali Jade if you're watching. So we are going to use a few different mediums in this workshop. First one is obviously fine liner, which I'm using here, as you can see, just to create the basic outline of my animal. And then we were also going to use some watercolor, some paper collage and some oil pastels. So if you do want this artwork to actually look like one of your pets, I suggest having a photo as a reference while you're working through it. I just used my imagination as I drew this and it actually, it, the basic line work that I'm doing here is a little bit dodgy. I'm not going to lie. It kind of, it was supposed to look like a dog. It kind of looks like a cat dog rabbit combo, uh, but you know, doesn't matter. So I just did that line at the background there. That is to just give you a sense of depth. And again, I'm just doing the really basic line work in my fine liner just to give the shapes and sizing and then I'll come in with some other mediums after that. And you'll notice the eyes on my animal are quite enlarged. So if you're wanting a more illustrative look, you can do this too. It definitely gives it more of a cartoony vibe, which I quite like. Uh, or if you are using a photo as a reference, you can go for that really uh, realistic look. It's totally up to you. This little class is all about just having fun and exploring a few different mediums on a wooden canvas. So now that I've done the basic outline with my fine liner, which is also a waterproof fine liner, so make sure that if you are using a, a fine liner that you do have a waterproof one if you're going to go over certain parts with watercolour paints because otherwise if it's not completely waterproof, the water from your paintbrush will smudge your lines. Okay, so I'm loading a lot of water onto my brush for this watercolor component because I really want that watercolor paint to be nice and translucent. So the more water you mix into your watercolor paint, the more translucent it will become. And that way you can still see that beautiful wood grain through the paint and it's almost just lightly tinting with color. So I really like that look. Um, you can do any color you want in the background or you might choose that you don't want to do watercolor paint and instead you want to do acrylic paint for a more solid look but on the wood grain canvas I just really like that translucent finish so you can still see the wood grain. Now you'll notice the right side of my canvas has got more color than the left side. So that's because I haven't put as much water on my brush. So what I've done now is just dip my paintbrush back into the water, not added any extra paint. 
and then just basically taken off a little bit of the paint so it just makes it a little bit more even on both sides then that's the beauty of watercolor paints it does sort of sit on the surface for a little bit so you can adjust the depth of the color um, you've got a little bit of time to play with it and spread it out a bit so now that the background is finished I have got a oil pastel and I'm just filling in a couple of little sections of the body of the cat dog um, just the inside of the ears there and I'm just yeah just quite rough but sticking within my lines um, oil pastels give a really great texture and it's really quite an opposite finish to watercolor which is quite smooth and sort of sits really cleanly on the surface whereas the oil pastels really sit on top of the surface um, and give a bit of a textured rough look so I've also gone in and done the nose with a black oil pastel so you could use these just for a few little details like I have or you might want to like color in the the ground with oil pastels for a really textured look okay the next part of this artwork is some paper collage so I have just taken a selection of some of my patterned papers I've got a big tub full of all different colored uh, papers with patterns and plain and I've picked out three that I like and I'm thinking kind of like a mosaic vibe for the ground which I, I'm imagining when I'm creating this that it's actually like a picnic blanket that this little dog cat is sitting on so I'm going to create kind of like a patchwork quilt mosaic sort of finish so I'm just cutting the pieces of paper up in tiny little pieces and I really don't have a pattern in mind so I'm just going to cut them up and kind of stick them quite roughly all over the surface. these pieces of paper down to the canvas I am using Mod Podge. Uh, Mod Podge is kind of like a thinned out PVA glue and it's perfect for paper collage, um, decoupage, all that type of stuff. You can get it from most craft shops or online and you just get a paintbrush and paint it on and then start sticking your paper down. And what's great about Mod Podge is you can also then paint over the top and it gives it kind of a varnished finish. Um, so I'm really doing a little rough sticking down of paper in this one. Um, you could be much more, uh, use much more attention to detail and really get like really intricate designs, but literally just going with the flow, chopping as I go to sort of fit it in, almost like a little jigsaw puzzle as I go, I'm, I'm creating the shapes. This style of paper collage is really fun and relaxing for me. I really enjoy the process, but not everybody does enjoy this sort of creating. So if you want to skip the paper and just use paint or pencils or crayons instead, that is totally fine. Uh, mixed media doesn't have to include paper collage. It, it's just generally more than one mediums that you're using and already with the watercolor and the oil pastels that is that's mixed media there because you are using more than one um, medium so don't feel like you have to use paper um, if you don't find it enjoyable to use paper just don't use paper do something else that is totally fine but for me personally I love paper collage this type of thing here where I'm just cutting pieces to fit as I go I love this and find it so 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 relaxing and that's the thing about creativity and making art you want to do stuff that actually brings you joy because what is the point if it's stressing you out and you're not enjoying the process you want to be enjoying the process of creating your art so really explore different mediums that you enjoy and then not worrying about how the finished product is going to look at this stage just enjoying the process
Now that I've finished the paper collage component of this artwork, I'm just going over the top of that paper collage with the Mod Podge just to seal it in and make sure there's no little bits sticking out. And then I'm having a look at it, seeing if it's finished, does it need something a little bit extra? Which I decide, yes, it does need something extra. So I've just gotten another oil pastel and using white, just doing some cute little scribble clouds. So again, because the oil pastels sit on top of the surface, it gives you a nice bit of depth um, and dimension. And I feel like that is much more finished now. It gives more balance to the whole artwork. If you didn't want to use oil pastels for clouds, you could cut out some old newspaper or some book pages into cloud shapes. That could look quite cute as well. And then for the final touch, I'm just using a colored pencil to give the eyes some color. I've gone with blue. I feel like this blue matches in really nicely with the colors I'm using. And then that is pretty much done for this artwork. I am just going back over a couple of the line works just where I accidentally covered up the edges with the paper. Um, so just sort of going over that to redefine the lines around the edges. And then once again, just going over all the paper collage areas with Mod Podge just to really seal that paper in. Make sure there's no sticking out bits anywhere else. I'm not going to Mod Podge over the rest of the artwork. I'm just going over the paper um, just because I don't feel like it needs it. I like, I'm liking the look of the body of the animal just in that raw uh, wooden, wooden ply. So I don't think I'll play around with that. Then just trimming off any edges where I've had the paper go over the edge of the canvas a little bit just to give it a nice clean finish. And that is done. So thank you so much for watching this video. I can't wait for you to have a go at this yourself and create your own fun pet portrait. And I will see you next time on Rondelle Designs.